everyone, I'm Kevin, otherwise known as Forum BX257, here to bring you another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review, and today I'll be taking a look at the small Battlefield accessory playset, the 1985 Forward Observer. Now, the Forward Observer, like a lot of the small playsets, does not make any comic book or cartoon appearances, which is really very unfortunate, because these are almost all very practically designed, they're very utilitarian, very military uh, as well. So you would think that even in the realistic setting of the comic book, you would see an example of one of these things, but unfortunately you don't. But they're still quite popular with collectors simply because of their practical design, so they display very well, as well as there being quite a few variations on these toys. The Forward Observer was made available again through mail order in the late 80s, around 1988-89 but only as a set with all six other uh, Battlefield accessories, the three from 1984 as well as the three from 1985. But these were mostly foreign overstock, probably from Argentina, so the plastic colors were actually quite a bit darker than they were for the North American release. But then in the early 90s, there was a second run of six Battlefield accessory sets available for mail away, but this time, even though it was still Ford Overstock being used as the mail away, mostly, instead of from Argentine, they were actually from the UK and Europe. So the plastic colors were exactly the same as a North American release, but this time, instead of G.I. Joe stickers, you might get Action Force stickers instead. As you can see, the Ford Observer is made up of a lot of small parts but it doesn't have any ground base for everything to click into in a specific way. You can arrange this in any fashion that you want, so it's actually suitable for a lot of different backgrounds, which is really great, actually. First, we'll take a look at the tent that it comes with. It's all one molded piece. A lot of nice detail on the outside. It does have like a a slight texture on the outside like canvas. There's uh, really nothing on the inside. It's uh, small enough for a single G.I. Joe figure of course. You can just uh, arrange a figure so that his head is poking out so that you can uh, use one of the accessories or just have him <laughs> taking a nap. Next we have the radio, which unfortunately does have a tiny little fragile antenna on there, which is often missing on these things. We have a telescope, which uh, swivels on this base, doesn't go up and down unfortunately. We have an ammo crate with uh, two mortar shells in it. Uh, one thing I do have to say is that the mortar shells are actually quite uh, quite well detailed and actually match the included mortar shells. The previous 1984 uh, mortar defense unit actually had an ammo crate which um, didn't have the same um, look as the shells, which is kind of strange. Just kind of hollow on the bottom though. Came with two of these shells. And then finally we have this giant mortar. I just uh, put a figure beside that just to show you that it is actually taller than the figure. The mortar actually comes with a movable bipod on the front and a movable base on the back. So even though the bipod feet have a very specific angle to their cut, making you think that it has to go like that and only that way, you can of course uh, just position it in any way you really want. Unfortunately the barrel doesn't isn't hollow, so you can't put the shells in it. Kind of a kind of an oversight in my opinion, but uh, 
it also means that you don't get shells stuck in there. And last but not least, we have a pair of figure stands. Now you have to remember back in 1985, the only way to get these uh, figure stands was through these small play sets or the Battle Gear accessory packs. They didn't come included with the figures until much later. So these were kind of hard to get and quite coveted, in fact. So even though a lot of collectors, they don't really include the battle stands with the uh, play sets and they still consider the play set um, complete, these are, these, are, these are still quite collectible and quite necessary. Of course, a lot of collectors generally tend to set this uh, set up specifically for the 1984 Spirit because even though, you know, there, there is no connection either in the comic books or the cartoons, on the retail package, he is actually shown right there with it, as well as on the instructions as well. They even went so far as to um, draw in his eagle. Now, this is the typical setup that most collectors will have uh, their forward observer in their displays, all just kind of bunched up like this. But this is actually incorrect. The What a forward observer actually is, is this portion of the playset, just the tent, the telescope, and the radio. What this is supposed to be is, this is supposed to be forward ahead of the mortar. So this should actually have been forward like this, observing the enemy with a telescope, a guy in a tent hiding from view, and of course the radio relaying shooting coordinates to the guy operating the mortar, who should be way back here, behind some cover, behind a hill, behind a mountain, or whatever. That's actually what a Ford Observer actually is. One easy comparison to make for the 1985 Ford Observer is that it's very much like the 1984 Bivouac. Now both of them had tents, both of them have launchers with shells, and both of them have radios. However, the Bivouac was a battle station size playset, whereas the Ford Observer was a battlefield accessory size playset, in that this was really meant for one figure to be uh, placed with or played with. Of course, you have two stands, so maybe two at the most. Whereas this was really meant for two figures, or you can even stuff uh, a third or a fourth figure to be with this, and it wouldn't look too uh, cramped or overflowing. The Forward Observer is one of the few playsets which I can't recommend trying to buy tiny little parts to fix one into a complete set. It's just so much easier just to find somebody who has already done it for you, a seller who is basically just selling it complete. There's just so many tiny little parts, like everything is a tiny little part. Take the telescope, for instance, comes apart comes apart in two pieces. This doesn't lock together to the base. It's just friction fit on there. Then you have things like the antenna on the radio. Finding antennas on vehicles, which are generally very, uh, very large, is kind of a hard thing to do. And here we have a tiny little antenna and the tip is often broken off. Then we have things like the mortar shells. You have two of them to find. And then there's even the large mortar. You would think that this would be a fairly easy uh, thing to find, complete an attack, but the base comes off, the bipod comes off, and worse yet, the tip of the barrel comes off as well. This again is just friction fit on there. So <laughs> I would really recommend having somebody else do the legwork rather than the frustration of trying to find one all intact. Well, it's very easy to tell what the opposite number to the forward observer would be on the Cobra side because, well, quite frankly, Cobra didn't have a lot of small play sets to uh, compare to. But easily, it's the 1986 surveillance port. Now, the design philosophy between these two play sets is like night and day, even though they achieve the same result. The Forward Observer is, of course, the battlefield accessory size, so it only accommodates one or two figures, whereas this was a battle station size playset, so it accommodated two or more. So 
yeah, they're not really comparable in that regard, but this is such an old fashioned looking um, set. I mean, you have the telescope as a separate little piece and a little tent and the radio is a little separate piece. There's no base to sort of uh, holding it all together. You just arrange it wherever you want. And it just seems to be like it should be like out in the woods. Whereas the Cobra surveillance port is such a high tech looking thing, but it's all integrated into one solid unit. mini play set whereas this is the battlefield accessory size <laughs> again it, it's it's not really uh, plugged in very securely it's just friction on there so well that's all the time I have right now please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.